Welcome to Race Game Body's IMAP presentation of Pop Not Sweet Treats, where we're going to be chatting about the different kind of personas and demographics that we're looking for in our customers that click on our ads and visit our shop, as well as the different campaigns that we're going to have to hopefully drive customers to convert to us. And then we'll talk about the newsletter that we have that we want to help so get people to convert. Um, so first is target audience, the demographics that people were looking for to click on these ads and who we're targeting to. Um, so they are mainly females. They are about 25 to 55 years old, and the reason for these two is because females typically tell us, and we've learned, that they're the ones who plan the events for home and our work, and they're the ones who are more interested in, in these fun, really kind of extravagant uh, baked goods normally. Age range we're looking for because these are the ones who have the jobs, the family people, they're doing different things, and they also have disposable income enough to actually uh, afford these baked goods. They're kind of expensive sometimes. Uh, so we want them to live within one mile to 20 miles because I'll be a one shop located in the South Shore of Long Island, New York, and 20 miles, you know, around the island, it actually gets you decently far to some extent. Um, so we talked about that uh, with the females playing the events and for work outings and such. So we want those people who are doing these things to click on our ads and see more about us. The average household income, we want at least 60000 or more. The reason being is, once again, these treats can be a little expensive. And if you don't have enough income, you're not going to want to spend it or you're going to see the value just making it yourself. Which also, because we're based on Long Island and Long Island being a very, very expensive place to live on, you need to have a decent income. So... The four personas that we have today are the stainiest one. This one is going to be someone who really wants to be fast and quick and easy and ready to go. Um, they just want us to tell them what they want. Basically, make it, give them, and go. That's why we're going to focus ads on our online ordering system and the pickup and store aspect. Super simple. The humanistic one is someone in this example who loves the environment, cares about others, and wants to make sure that uh, big business isn't uh, taking over. Um, so, a uh, small company, thankfully. And uh, we want to focus our ads on renewable products like our renewable and recyclable cupcake wrappers. Um, we can connect on them on that level so they can trust us, build that rapport. Then we have the mythological one, the person who really has the highest expectations, like, so they want the finest details, we're going to give them the finest details. And in these ads, we're going to focus on everything from the friendly hello to the see you later. The reason for this is they want to see all the puzzle pieces go together, what they expect when they walk in the shop and until the end when they're about to leave. And we want to focus ads on that so they feel more comfortable with us and want to chat with us more. The competitive one is our last one, and they're the ones who are going to give gifts to others, get that wow moment, and see their eyes light up when they give these gifts away, uh, and they want to be larger than life. So by focusing ads on these humongous gift baskets and catering orders and just the, the surprising factor and, and, the, and the joy when people eat these treats, that's what's going to make this person feel good. So by marketing to all these people differently because they're all unique in different scenarios, that's how we're going to really target every little niche out there. Next, we have the broad campaign. This is our first one, and uh, we're working with MyBakingAddiction.com, a blog, and um, what they, our goal is just to get a general ad out there saying, hey guys, this is what we have. Here's a coupon for buy one, get one free, potentially. Um, just come visit us. Come click on the ad. Come visit our site. See what we can do. Conversion rate of 1% only and only about eight more customers, which isn't a whole lot. You know, average transaction is about $30 for uh, two dozen cupcakes or a dozen cake pops and so on or more. So that's what we're going with. And the exposure we're going to get is uh, 300,000 uh, people, or which is great, and our ad budget is $200 for this, but unfortunately the revenue we get from this is only $225, so we do make our money back plus a little extra, but you think about all the work that goes into it, it's probably not worth it, so we need to figure out a way to just get a little more tweaked, and that's when we come to the next campaign, called the targeted campaign, the targeted campaign, we're going to start narrowing down our search for people, we're going to make um, ads focus around, around where our shop is within the 1 to 20 miles, and we're going to focus on specific events. So something like the special offers we'll give is like a free cake tasting on the coupon online or the newsletter uh, is because we're going to place those ads within wedding articles. Uh, and by doing that, we're going to see people who are looking for these particular items and want to actually come in and shop at us and go, hey, what is this? Uh, and that's why we're doing that. Uh, and statistics for this is a 2% conversion rate with 11 conversions only, uh, and then exposure 150,000 people, and our ad budget is 550. But the problem here is revenue is only 315, so it's still not a great campaign for us, unfortunately. So we need to move forward and try the next one. That's where the intention-based uh, campaign comes in. Intention-based campaign is main goal is to basically get really down there with keywords based on our newsletters and our websites and our ads. Uh, and when we use keywords very, uh, very, very direct, like pop notch and theme desserts from pop notch and pop notch websites and we get literally no data going to similarweb.com that's when we use more generic terms like uh, cake pop and cake and desserts and stuff uh, we get tons more ads uh, uh keyboard population and people who look up these terms so we're getting more of a fact of finding more customers this way and then of course special offers uh, on these uh, with these keywords mixed in we're going to use them like cake and free and low cost party favors these because these are terms that people are looking for going to similar web and that's how we're going to find us which is awesome 
Then statistic-wise, the conversion rate is only 2% and 11 people converted, which is okay. Um, it's going to be 50,000 people are going to see it and ad budget is 550 and revenue is 330. So uh, our web statistics uh, for bakingedition.com is 472 uh, unique views and the traffic is 48% via search. There's people are finding them and they're finding them via things like ambrosia salad and chili seasoning, things that we don't do, but hey, they're still finding the website, which is pretty cool. Uh, then we have our newsletter sponsorship. The main goal is to showcase uh, our free items and baking classes. So people want to click on the ad and say, hey, cool, what is this? Especially after they're reading things on Flourish.com, which is another a uh, newsletter site, blog site, very popular. And uh, by them getting excited and reading about how to get better at baking and what they can do, and then all of a sudden they see an ad like free baking classes. Perfect. They're going to want to click on it. So special offers, like I said, it's free baking classes, free cake tastings, and other free baking promos. So people get excited about wanting to try it out and actually not cost them any money. Uh, conversions is going to be 7%, which is pretty nice, and 36 people convert. Uh, we're going to spend $150 on it, but we're going to actually make over $1,000, which is super cool. So by having this new letter and having more information get sent out about us and getting people to sign up with their emails and getting us to understand us more and more uh, and faster, this is how we're going to grab those folks. And as in a, a landing page optimization aspect on Flourish's blog, we want people to click on the ads and click on the promos and we can track those uh, promo clicks and, and who's reading our newsletters after we get their emails and we're going to just keep tracking to see what's working and what's not. Maybe a certain topic we talk about in the newsletter isn't as popular as others. That's what we want to do. Um, and then with what statistics of Flourish Blog, they have 878,000 unique views, traffic's 54 via search, and they get things like how to make sourdough at 2% as the keywords that they use to get customers. As an example, we have this uh, newsletter. So it's whip spring into treats, and you know, these flower cake pops have a picture of it and go. Uh, we have SPO of the week and readers' photos. The reason why we included this is because people would want to and love to show their photos that they made things out of like pre-baking lessons or at home on this newsletter to kind of get that pizzazz and feel excited and want to submit more and want to keep reading our newsletter and keep reading to see if they're photo got into it at some point. Perfect idea. And at the bottom, we have our special offers, our free cake tasting coupon to buy one, get one free treats that they can use at any time. And there you go. That's why we want this newsletter, and that's how we're going to get all of the facts that we need. That's how we're going to get our customers uh, involved and love our brand.